Karen Shakir, and she's given us some information relative to the psychological impact of slavery on African Americans. And she has already talked about its impact upon females as well as upon men. And now we would like to uh, have you to con mm -hmm. say something about some of the issues that uh, face our young people today. Because I think that uh, if there is a problem in terms of trying to deal with uh, the family and et cetera, I think it has to uh, start at least with them. That's Absolutely. Very good. Let's talk about that. Absolutely. Uh, our children uh, in the educational system now are failing. They're not even reading sufficiently at the third grade. And no one's catching this. They're being just promoted on and given a diploma. And when they reach college, they can't even get in because the ACT scores are so low that they cannot be admitted. And to me, it's an injustice because someone has to catch this at the age of seven and six. And a lot of it is, is prop, the problem is at home as well. As parents, we have to get engaged with our children's reading and engaged in their lives at school. We can't no longer leave it up to the teachers. Uh, a lot of our children today feel like that we, I know they feel like we have left them because they're swimming in this world that's moving so fast and they can't keep up. In the public schools, and especially in Nashville, there's a level that's called a resource level that a lot of African American men are put into. And they're put in this category because they cannot learn in a traditional way. Their reading is not proficient. They cannot sit still in a chair long enough. So they attach labels like ADHD on our children and then they put them on drugs and then they put them in a category where they get more funding to have these children in resource classes, the particular school does. And we as parents just sit back and let this happen to our children. We don't look in long terms effect of the education that our children have. We're not concerned with the teenage pregnancy. I was, oh, it shocked me to find out that 50% of African American female teenagers will have one child by the time they get 20. That's a huge number. That's a real number. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so we're talking about essentially babies having babies. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we know we have the male problem. The father's not there. And I would like to see as a remedy for this, a long time ago during the civil rights era, and any time we really had to dig deep and get help, mm -hmm. we searched for that help through our religious organizations, rather it be the mosque, mm -hmm. rather it be the masjid, rather it be the church. Mm -hmm. And these centers of our social community have to stand up. They have to make this happen. And how do they make it happen? They bring in get uh, programs to design the women how to be chaste and how to, to, to take pride in themselves as African American women. And they bring the program to the men children to raise them and have the men engage with men. Because we do have very good men in our community. It's just so far and few between. It's unheard of now to find a black man who hasn't been in prison or who hasn't been in jail. Our juvenile system has almost tripled in the last decade with African American children. In our educational system, all of our schools now have police officers in them. That wasn't going on when I was a child. So what's happening? There's a serious breakdown in America, but America keeps moving forward. We've got to catch up as a community. Uh, I know that it starts at a very early age. That's one of the reasons I opened up a school, because I'm going to try to just grab a few of them as I can and as just many as you can. Yeah, mm -hmm. and just try to implement mm -hmm. some of these programs into their heads when they're young but the basis of it comes from the home. We've got mothers that's on cracks, children who haven't seen their mother in days. They get themselves ready for school. I had one little girl tell me about a foster home that she's been in for the last 20 years, and she goes to see her mother regularly. Mother has two other kids there. So the, the dynamics of the family life is completely broken down, and we have to rebuild that. Uh, the civil rights came in. There was a progress. It was a beautiful thing but we have never dealt with the psychological effects that we had after generation of generation of slavery. 300 years yes. of slavery, right. Yes, yes ma'am. Mm -hmm. That's an implanted DNA. That's mm -hmm. DNA that's mm -hmm. implanted in your brain. Uh, uh, our men, uh, children are self-medicating themselves right now. Mm -hmm. Nicotine, alcohol, drugs. Um, a lot of times on the plantation, we used to, as slaves, sit in our little bitty huts or in our slave houses, which it was several in one particular area, like a barn, 
and we would look up at the big house and just see all these beautiful things and see the beautiful clothes that they wore. So we were admiring all of these things. So in our community now, if we get a dollar or fifty dollars or anything, we're going to go buy some gold. I mean, we take it to the gold teeth and gold chains and big wheels on our car, and we got a baby that's starving on the next street that we haven't even been to see. Uh, a lot of times, and I was a single parent, North Nashville, so I I know what I'm talking about. I was a product of it, and as a single parent, when my son turned twelve, I did. <clears throat> I had our, we had our own place. I took everything, turned my rent in, didn't pay rent, left, and went moved in with my father purposely so that my son would have a male influence in his life because I knew it was either that or the streets. And uh, my father was a wonderful man. He's always been in my life, and he's always been the perfect dad for me. And now they're coming out with statistics that's showing that female women who have a relationship with their father it's a, it's a mystical bind. It, it allows them to really look for a different type of man. They don't get caught up in abusive relationships as much. They don't become uh, addicts. So this is very important that the man plays his role in our family. It, his, that, his function is crucial. And he has to understand it. And what happened is the African-American woman was taught and trained to push him out the house, to not be bothered with a man. She can handle it on its own. She's so independent. Yeah, she's mm -hmm. independent. Mm -hmm. So when he is at home, she doesn't make him feel like he's running the house. She doesn't make him feel like he's in charge. She doesn't allow that chest to be stuck out because she's too busy trying to control him. So, of course, then you have separation because he's not going to stand for that, especially if he's trying to achieve that manhood. Mm -hmm. uh, during the slavery times, we had, there were certain slaves that was used for co comedy, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, they shuckled and jived and just kept mm -hmm. the overseers Everybody. entertained. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you see that in our society a lot. Everything's a game, especially with our boys from the age of 14 to 18. They become very good comedians. Everything's a game. Mm -hmm. Even in the gang, it's a game. It may cost them their life, but it's, it's a, a game. game. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And they don't take life serious. Uh, fornicating with women, it's a game. Mm -hmm. And there's a baby, it's a game. Oh, I'll buy some diapers now. But every day, that baby needs something. And that's a serious situation. Uh, Naeem Akba, uh, who I read a lot from, he's delivered two wonderful books mm -hmm. in terms of the uh, psychological effects of slavery and he has one really good one out mm -hmm. called visions for black men mm -hmm. and i encourage every black man mm -hmm. to make sure they read that book vision for black visions men. for black men mm -hmm. because it lets them know that there are three stages to becoming a man mm -hmm. and if you're caught in this one particular stage this mm -hmm. is what happens mm -hmm. this is why you can't get above that particular mm -hmm. um element in your life so it's some wonderful information out there, but it's time for us to act. We've been sitting in our masjids and our churches and getting all this knowledge for years and years. It's time for some action now. We have to develop programs, and I mean working programs, not programs just to get benefits and not programs just as a babysitting mechanism for after school. We have to get programs that's gonna put jobs in our children's hands, that's gonna have them prepared for this world, and we can create a lot of educated people that will contribute mm -hmm. to the society as well. So what you're saying, Mr. Shakir, is that it's not really too late. No. Uh, that we can still change things and turn things around, but we have to be conscientious about it. That yes. is, we have to make up our minds and we have to get our institutions, yes. those institutions that have sustained us for so long, the church and yes. other organizations to become involved with our young people again. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely, Very absolutely. Good. When I'm in public school and I'm teaching, uh, once I let the children know, hey, I'm from North Nashville, mm -hmm. I come, you know, I'm right here in the hood with you. I'm not mm -hmm. going anywhere. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to Brentwood. I'm mm -hmm. staying here. Mm -hmm. And they, they just get so relaxed and we actually have a very good relationship, and they open up and talk to me a lot about very what's good. happening. Very good. And of course, let me thank you, Mr. Shakir, for bringing that excellent information by Please. to us. And let me encourage our audience to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank you, and good morning.